Hello everybody, it's Anne. I'm back. Yep, I do that now and again. I'm going to do something a little different, which for me is kind of a lot different lately. Um, all of you know how much I absolutely love, and I mean love, my colorful looks. But, when I originally started this channel, it's partially because I am 60. I am of a certain age, which does make a bit of a difference with how you do your makeup. And colorful looks are not always what people of a certain age are looking for. You can do color anytime you want to. But some of the ladies and some of the people in general who are trying to get either into makeup or back into makeup are looking for more subtlety. I'm not subtle very often. However, I do know how to do subtle. Mostly. <laughs> anyway, what I'm going to do, since my friend Nona sent me some wonderful stuff, including this Tarte um, Rainforest of the Sea 3 palette, which is pretty neutral. Lots of shimmers, but pretty neutral. I thought I might do something really, really subtle, neutral. You know, something that some people would think of as an everyday look. Something that some people would just look at and go, I can do that. Simple stuff. Simple basics. Now, I have put on my moisturizer. In this case, it's not a big, fancy name. It's Burt's Bees. You can pick this up at any drugstore. It's wonderful. Sensitive skin, no big deal. It's safe enough to use on a new tattoo. Okay? Which takes a little work. You want something that's going to soak in and not just sit and block the skin because you want it to heal. Now, this little widget right here, I have to wear a CPAP. If you're not familiar with that, it's a breathing apparatus that helps people breathe who have an obstructive um, breathing situation. Yes, I'm a little extra dewy because it's hot. Today it is hot. But the strap that sits here has irritated the heck out of my skin. So I'll either have to replace that or put something on it to, to keep it from irritating me. I've got this part of my hair pinned up a little bit so it's not falling down in my face. And I'm not going to use a foundation because not everybody likes foundation. I have my e.l.f. Prime and Stay Finishing Powder that I'm going to use after I get finished doing my eyes. You don't have to go out and buy foundation. This is like three bucks. And it's wonderful. It's a wonderful powder. Yes, wonderful powder. Silky, smooth. This one is light medium. They have up through a dark. If that one doesn't suit your skin tone, there are plenty of others. Now, I'm going to suggest, even if you're just getting into makeup again, is get a brush for your powders. Get a brush. Yes, you can use the puff that comes with the powder if you want, if that's what you're familiar with. However, you're going to get a better, 
streak-free distribution if you at least go over it with the brush after you apply. It's just run it over in circular motion. It'll help even out the powder distribution. It'll look better. I'm not going to tell you to go out and get a whole brush pup. A whole pant load of brushes. You don't need a whole pant load of brushes. Not even for your eye makeup. I mean, when I first started off doing eye makeup as a teenager, I used Q-tips. Just like these. You know, just plain old Q-tips. Because those little foam applicators would wear out and fall apart. So I used a Q-tip, or I used my fingers. You don't need a pant load of brushes. One or two nice brushes. And let me tell you, e.l.f. brushes are definitely wonderful. Because you can pick a lot of the e.l.f. brushes up for a dollar. No, really. e.l.f. brush. Dollar. The white handled ones are most often a dollar. Some of the dark handled ones are all of three. Let's see. I think this one is the four dollar. Yeah. Foundation burnishing brush. Four dollars. That's if you're using a liquid foundation. You know, this one that, that I use for my blushes quite often. I picked up a Dollar Tree for a dollar. It's a nice brush. It's soft. It works. Getting into makeup does not require a huge investment. Now, this fancy Tarte palette is not required. You can get the same colors or close enough at Dollar Tree. You can get them from LA Colors. You can get them from Sassy. You can get them from Beauty Benefit, which is not Benefit Cosmetics. Beauty Benefit's a different line. You can get stuff from excuse me, color mates. You don't have to have high-end stuff. The fact that I have high-end stuff at all is because other people are nice to me now and again. Nona and I did a swap. I don't have lots and lots and lots of cosmetics. So when we did a swap, I'll put the links for the film in the corner somewhere or in the description below. She has quite a collection of cosmetics. And she sent me some that she had duplicates of. For which I am very grateful. But I didn't have a like type of material to send her. So I sent her home canned food. So far, I understand she absolutely loves the pickles. And she has been having a lovely time with my home can. If you want to play swap with somebody, it doesn't have to be identical stuff. But yeah, she sent me stuff she had duplicates of. She gets a lot of subscription boxes. That means you get duplicates fairly often. So, yeah, I got this that way. However, my usual makeup is stuff that I have collected from Dollar Store, Shop Miss A. Um, Shop Miss A is also a wonderful place for brushes. Shop Miss A, and I'm not sponsored, they have wonderful liquid lipsticks and all kinds of makeup and everything's a dollar including their brushes. 
this big fancy fan brush is an AOA Studio brush which comes from Shop Miss A. It was a dollar. Now this one is the one that Nona sent me but I've got plenty of other Shop Miss A brushes and they're all a dollar. They're wonderful. You don't have to kill yourself. You don't have to get big and fancy. Things like, I'm going to get started on this since I'm just yakking here. I've got some basic concealer from an inexpensive line that I'm going to use as my eyeshadow primer. Yes, I have other eyeshadow primers. Not everybody necessarily wants to go out looking for eyeshadow primer. A concealer or your foundation can be used for this purpose. Now, by the way, anybody who's got any questions about any of this, I don't care if you're a woman of a certain age or if you're a trans woman going through transition and you want to learn this stuff, just ask me. We can talk. If you've got specific questions, I would even consider making a video that I send just to you for your specific issue. Not a big deal. If you don't want to, like, talk in front of everybody. I got no problem with that. We can talk. Anyway, the only thing this is doing, the concealer, is putting a even tone across the eyelid. It also gives it a little bit of a sticky base for the powders to stick to. I'll do something like this with some of the cream stuff too because you either you can either use a base or not with the creams it doesn't really matter now I'm going to start this is going to be kind of a classic what they tell everybody to do there's exactly one matte color in this little pinwheel and I am going to set the eye base with this matte color which for some people they like to do it some people don't like to do it it's kind of a base technique that if you're trying to blend a lot it'll make the powders that you put on after this slip a little easier it's kind of like powdering over your foundation before you put powder blush on it makes it slide and glide a little easier But, it also takes the sticky out. So if you've got something that you really want to stay put, and if you've got some really intense colors that you want to shine, you may not want to do this kind of technique because you're going to want that sticky base to grab those colors. 
Like I said though, this is I'm going back to doing some old school here. Just in case we've got some people that are brand new to this stuff. Or trying to get back into this stuff. And they want to see some pretty basic technique. Now, like some of us older types, I have crepey eyes. See? Crinkly, crinkly, crinkly. If I pull my eyelid up by raising my eyebrows as high as I can, it's smoother, which is nice. But I also have hooded eyes. Makes them very hard to, to play with. With hooded eyes, you really need to put whatever you're thinking of as your crease color up here so that it'll still be seen when the hood drops. Now, some people will tell you, and it's a good way to start if you're not used to it, is get a flat brush like this and take the color that you want to use for your crease and literally just sketch out a new line. I picked a rather pale color, but just sketch out where you want that crease to be. Here, let's try it with the darker one. And put it on lightly because I don't want that darker one right there in the crease. Now that's where you're going to take that color up to. Now that doesn't leave you a whole lot in here so it's a little tricky. But if you don't go up that high, when you open your eyes you're not going to see whatever color you put in here because it's going to be folded in. Pain in the rear, I know. Anyway, I'm going to go back to that slightly lighter color and start. Yes, I'm going to work it into this area, but I'm going to go up to here with it. Now, if you've got hooded eyes, take a really good look at the way your eyes fold when your eyes are open. And really look to see where the colors need to go. And don't just rely on the windshield wiper. Do you see the way the skin is moving? Because they're crepey, because I'm 60. Do little circles. Little circles. Lightly. You'll get a lot better result on getting, keeping from getting those big tiger stripe color bands 
where you're trying. No, I'm not going to draw a line here. I know where I'm going. I've been doing this a while. But see, if you just do this, you end up with stripes where those folds are, you're hitting the top of the folds, but down in between the folds, you got no color. So, circles, 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 circ, 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 circ. Now, down here on the mobile lid, I'm not really worried about putting very much on the mobile lid because it's not really going to show. I'll be right back. Sorry about that. My allergies are getting the best of me. I'm not going to put a really specifically bright or dark or expansive color on the mobile lid. For one thing, this is a simple look, and for the other thing, on the mobile lid, it's going to get mostly hidden, except right along the eyelash line with the hooded lids. If you've got unhooded lids, hallelujah for you. Go wacky. Put whatever you want to on them. Shine it up. I am putting a little bit of something shiny on here, but it's a pale pearly pink. It's nothing that's really going to you know, you'll see a little of the edge of it when the eyes are open. Hooded eyes are the bane of my existence because I really like the idea of putting flash colors on my eyes. I don't get away with a lot in the mobile lid area. Most of my flash color, I have a tendency to put up through here so it can be seen. But, since we're doing a relatively subtle thing, really nice when your eyes are closed. You can see a little of it with your eyes open. Now what I'm going to do is take that darkest color in this palette, which is this really pretty chocolate brown. That's the problem with these things. They're, 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 it's pretty much impossible to tell you what the colors are because they've got them written in pale stuff on gold shiny. Let's see, this dark one is Malibu. I use Tiki on the lid first and then Jewel and then Heat Wave on the mobile lid and now Malibu. This does not mean you need to go get this palette. I will repeat again. This does not mean you need to go get this palette. However, if you know the names of the colors, you can look them up online and see what they look like and then also go see what other companies' palettes or whatever 
do something similar if you like how this turns out or if you just want to do this you can use whatever colors you want actually this is just a basic technique you'll hear some people talk about the outer V I call it an outer 7 some people other people call it the outer 7 it's basically just to define that outside spot at the eye and if you give it a little more dark color and depth it tends to pull the focus out from the center out this way Now, I could have done this holding the palette in front of my face since it's got its own little mirror. But if I did that, I'd have likely blinded you because the back of the palette is really, really shiny and I use a ring light. Yes, I use a ring light. Anybody interested in my little bitty ring light? It's a little tiny thing. It's not actually much bigger than the palette. Paid 15 bucks for the whole setup. It's got a little clamp that you can either put your cell phone in or like I've got it turned currently to rest my what would normally be a top of your monitor screen um, webcam. I don't have a fancy camera. I have a webcam. I had started off with my phone. I have graduated slightly, but only slightly. Okay, now. I'm going to use my color switch, which is basically you can use a wash rag or whatever else, or you can get a fancy color switch, or you can go to Dollar Tree, pick up a little tin and a dollar ponytail donut to take the pink that was down here off of this. Now see, I really haven't done much with that dark. But I'm going to take another one of the pale colors. This one's Treasure. And I'm just going to go right across the top here. Staying just under the eyebrow. If you leave just a little bit under the eyebrow... I am told it's a slightly more youthful effect. I'll believe it when I really see it. To me, it's just, it's a little more visually appealing. The, my version of the more youthful effect is it doesn't look like Agnes Moorhead doing Endora with the blue all the way up to her freaking hairline, practically. It's just a little touch. What I do for my eyebrows, this is an e.l.f. eyebrow pencil. It's two bucks. No, I am not sponsored by e.l.f. If I was sponsored by anybody, I would tell you I'm just that way. Basically, I just try and get the hair kind of going the same way. Since it is a little pale, I put a little bit of pencil in it 
just a bit of pencil in it. So that it doesn't look like especially so it doesn't look like the 1960s tadpole eyebrows I hated those nothing big no fancy no real big structured things like you see on some of the Instagram and such just enough. Now, if your hands are steady enough, you can use a felt tip liner to put a little bit of an eye, eye line on. If your hands are not that steady, use a pencil. But nobody says you have to do this all in one swoop either. I pick it up and move it and come back in because my hands are not necessarily steady. And I don't go way out over here either. I just don't. For one thing, because of the hooding and the creping, it would disappear into the wrinkles. It's not an attractive look. And I just do little tap pull, tap pull. right along the base of the eyelash just so they stand out a little more. That's all I do for the most part unless I'm doing some really big fancy glam thing which You don't have to get crazy with eyeliner. You don't have to get crazy with mascara. Now I'm going to let all this kind of sit and think about itself while I grab my powder and start doing the rest of this mug just a bit. Now, all I did, now you can put concealer under here if you really want to, to go all, cover up, you know, your circles and your veins and all that. Let me show you something, though. I'll do it on the other eye since I haven't powdered over there yet. Now, during the winter, when I use more coverage for things like my foundation and all that, put that over there to cover that up just a little, I will get a little more intense with things like under the eye. However, with concealer and you go over it and you powder it and keep going over here just a little bit so you can see the powder now yes you can see that vein but skin looks pretty natural over here you don't see the vein but it holds the wrinkles 
a lot more. You can see the wrinkles really, really, really well because that concealer is hanging on to that powder. So, yeah, no. At least not for me. Now, no, I am not going to powder right over my little tattoo has nothing to do with showing off the tattoo. It has to do with the tattoo is still really fresh. I've only had her for a little while. Thursday it'll be a whole week. And I want to make sure she's completely healed before I start putting stuff besides moisturizers and sunscreen over her little self. Yes, it's a her. All of my tattoos have been identified. And no, that is not my first tattoo. And no, I am not currently showing you my other tattoos. One is in the center of my back, and I don't have somebody else here to hold the camera. I'll see if I can find a picture. And one of the tattoos is on my right hip. It is a single word that is part of a art project by a woman named Shelley Jackson who's up in New York. And I am a word in a story she wrote. So that word is now tattooed on my right hip. I'll explain that when, you know, I'm going to do something on my tattoos. I will explain that one there. Now, see, finished the powder. Yes, you can see the vein but the skin looks pretty natural. Yes, the skin is powdered. There's a concealer under, under the powder. You don't see the vein, but you can sure as hell see the wrinkles. Oh yeah. Now, Next part. Yes, this is my fancy new blush that Nona sent me. No, it doesn't need to be a fancy blush. It can be anything. It could be my $2 blush from e.l.f. Basically, it's just a little extra color for your face. Now, normally I do bronzer and do what's what's called a bronze tour. So, you know, I kind of take it into the hollows and down the neck. And then I put on the blush and then I put on the highlighter. And, yeah, not so much with this. It's, it's fun. It looks good, but it's not necessary. Just put a little blush on your face so that you don't look quite so flat. It doesn't have to be a lot. It doesn't have to be shiny. It doesn't have to be particularly standout-ish. But you can see my skin is fairly even toned because of the powder other than the little imperfections of my skin anyway. 
and that little bit of blush just adds a little bit of quote unquote life to the party. You don't have to get crazy. You don't have to go nuts. If you want to use bronzer, that's fine. If you don't, you don't have to. Now, where I would put bronzer at this point is I would run it under here and under here and a little bit on the sides of my nose and across here. And with me, if I'm doing the quote-unquote bronze tour, I would run it under here because it's a little bit darker and it tends to make this a little less visually standout-ish. Sort of. Everybody's still going to know I have a double chin or depending on who I'm talking to, this is at least four. Um... But because it's slightly darker than the rest of it, it's not the, the light's not bouncing off of it like, you know, frog belly. It's not that big a deal. Little blush, little color on the eyes. Now, if I was using highlighter, which again is a personal preference, but if you if this is the first time you're trying to do makeup for yourself, think about highlighter after you've looked at some more videos. But basically, you're just putting a little shine here, a little shine here, a little shine here. Some people shine their nose up. Now me, I tend to, if I've done the, the bronzer or contour on the sides of my nose, I put a little streak of the light stuff down the center because my, my face is very flat here. It really is. It's very flat here. And it's, it, that tends to at least visually make it look like I've got more of a bridge to my nose. Because like yeah flat but once my glasses are on nobody's really going to see it anyway alrighty put my little bit of mascara on when I'm doing a look like this I just you know kind of brush it a little bit so it looks like I have eyelashes I was born blonde. I am not technically a blonde anymore. The Victorians used to call the color dark mouse. It's a really, really pale brown with some blondish and reddish highlights. Now, both of my parents were born blonde, or as they used to call it, toe-headed. My daddy's hair went jet black when he got to be an adult. My mama's hair was kind of a chestnut brown. My baby sister ended up with auburn hair and green eyes. The huzzy. I have the pale blue eyes of my dad. I wanted his father's violet eyes. Got my dad's pale blue eyes. And 
hair that went from so pale it looked like I was bald when I was a baby to that gorgeous honey wheat kind of color in high school and by the time I got to about 35 it was that bizarre kind of light brown. I was not amused. Anyway, that's when I started hitting colors. I was red for a while. I used a lot of henna. I've been back and forth between different versions of blonde. Currently it's now blonde with a pink cast. Um, yeah. But since I have an autoimmune issue that also tends to have my hair fall out, I just said to heck with it. I kept where it's the thickest, which turned out to be a mohawk. And the rest of it mostly gets shaved off. During the winter, I sometimes let this get a little bit longer. I'm due for another trim. But, that's during the winter. Because it's cold around here. But I've been doing the mohawk for quite a while now. And I am enjoying the heck out of it. Okay, now, let's see what we're going to do with the lipids. Now, with something this subtle, I have a tendency to stay in the subtles. Now, this is one of my favorite colors because it's pale. This also is something that I got from Nona. This is a sample of a bite lipstick. This one's called Glacé. Now, I have other subtle colors. This is Elf. That's a $2 lipstick. No, this is a dollar lipstick. Touch of Nude. I picked this up at Dollar Tree. Elf. Flirtatious. Subtle. No, I don't regularly use lip pencil. For one thing, I forget about it. For another thing, at 60, and sometimes a little younger, If you've got creases around your mouth that lipstick tends to bleed into, lip pencil may or may not fix it. For me, it tends to not fix it. I'll take my little pins out. Take my little pins out. Give this a little floof. Now, occasionally, depending on my mood, I either put a few pins in it when it's wet and get it to floof a little. Sometimes I just let it lay and let it lay to the side and drape. This is like third day after a pin curl. Yes, even with this little hair, I follow the current recommendations for not washing your hair every blessed day. So, subtle, simple. Beginners can do this. Old hads can do this.
Remember, I don't keep bail money around. Be good.